Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the date, part of the countdown to 2025, 13 integrals in 13 days. So I'm going to solve this integral using the Weierstrass substitution that was requested by one of my viewers. If you're not familiar with that substitution method, then make sure you watch the video that I made on it. I'll link it in the description and in the top right here. It's not very long and it's a beautiful substitution that helps you more easily evaluate integrals that are in this form. So basically what we do to start is we're gonna make the substitution of t equals tangent of x over two, okay? And you can memorize all the corresponding formulas, but I like to just derive them. The less you memorize, the better, and it's not very difficult if you just know Sokotoa, you know how to make a right triangle, okay? So this is equivalent to saying that tan inverse of t is equal to x over 2. And I'm going to draw a triangle that represents this relationship here. So the angle is x over 2. Tangent of x over 2 needs to equal t. So here's the angle x over 2. And if tangent of that angle is t, t over 1, that means the ratio of the opposite over the adjacent side needs to be t over 1. Are we okay so far? Perfect. Then, using the Pythagorean theorem, let's find the hypotenuse, which is square root of t squared plus 1. And then from here, we can find sine of x over 2 and cosine of x over 2 which we'll need in just a minute, okay? So sine of x over two, that's gonna be the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which is t over square root t squared plus one, and then cosine ratio of adjacent side, which is one over square root of t squared plus one. Okay, so like I said, some people memorize all of that. I just say, draw the triangle, it doesn't take very long. Okay. Now, from here, we're ready to differentiate both sides so that we can rewrite this integral all in terms of t. I could differentiate right now, or what would make it easier is if we move the 2 over to the other side. So 2 tan inverse of t is equal to x. And then now, if I take the derivative of both sides, derivative of tan inverse of t would be 1 over 1 plus t squared. And I'm just keeping that 2 there, dt equals 1 dx, all right? So what we're going to do from here, replace dx in the numerator with all of this right here. And then you might say, but wait a minute, Professor V, we have sine of x, and here you have sine of x over 2. That seems problematic. Not really. So sine of plain old x, think of it this way, it's sine of 2 times x over 2. So utilizing my double angle identity, this is 2 sine x over 2 cosine x over 2. And then, oh, perfect. I have sine of x over 2 cosine x over 2 sitting up there. Let me get this all ready to go. So we have 2 times, this is going to be t over square root of t squared plus 1 times cosine is just 1 over square root of t squared plus 1. And then I can put 2 and t together in the numerator. That'll make it look really nice. And no more radical in the denominator, right? Because square root of t squared plus 1 times itself is just t squared plus 1. So this, you guys, this is sine x. So I'm going to replace sine x in my integral with 2t over t squared plus 1. So let me rewrite what we had because it's all the way up there. So we have dx over 3 minus 2 sine x. And then now we just said dx gets replaced with all of this. Okay, 2 over 1 plus t squared dt over... 3 minus 2 times, and then sine x is all of this, 2t over t squared plus 1. That looks deformed. I don't like it at all. Come on. Boom. Okay. 
That's a big integral sign. Now, once you get through the cleaning up and you get through the algebra, it's usually a very easy integral, okay? But you just gotta keep your wits together and not mess up some small computation. Okay, if you want, let me clean this up just a bit more and then we're gonna clear out the complex fraction. So this is two over one plus t squared over three minus four t over t squared plus one is the same, one plus t squared dt. So I wanna get rid of that extra denominator. So I'm gonna to multiply top and bottom by one plus t squared. All right, things are coming along beautifully. Now up top, look, one plus t squared is gonna cancel. So then I just have two over this one plus t squared distributes. So then it's gonna be three plus mm -hmm, three t squared minus 4t because it cancels out completely in the denominator here. And then don't forget about good old dt sitting off to the side. Okay, what to do? Let me put the denominator in descending powers. So 2 over 3t squared minus 4t plus 3 dt. So no, I'm not going to use sub because there's no linear expression involving t up top. Best thing to do is just see, can I complete the square? Because then I'm thinking of if we have antiderivative 1 over x squared plus a squared dx, we know that's 1 over a tan inverse x over a plus c, right? So can I clean up and complete the square and just have it resemble this form? And then we're going to be done? I think we can. So to complete the square, I need to factor out whatever the coefficient is on the quadratic term. So I'm actually gonna take a three out of the whole denominator. And we can take the two out while we're at it. So we have a two thirds out here. I'm gonna put dt over t squared minus four thirds t plus one. Are we okay? All right, now let me complete the square off to the side. So t squared minus four thirds t in order to have a perfect square trinomial, we take this coefficient, cut it in half, which would make it 2 thirds, and then square it, which would be 4 ninths. So I need to add 4 ninths, but you can't just go willy-nilly adding 4 ninths. We have to also subtract 4 ninths, so I haven't really done anything illegal. And then don't forget there's that plus 1 hanging out. So then now these three terms form a perfect square trinomial. So we have t minus 2 thirds quantity squared. And then negative 4 ninths plus 9 over 9 is 5 over 9. Uh-huh. Oh, I think we're pretty much there. We're pretty much there. So we've got 2 thirds integral dt over t minus 2 thirds squared plus, just so you can more clearly identify what a is, the constant, I'm going to write 5 ninths instead as rad 5 over 3 squared. Okay. Beautiful. So here we go. We're ready. Keep that 2 thirds out there times. Now you're going to have 1 over a. 1 over a is the same as, very good, 3 over rad 5. So 2 thirds times 3 over rad 5. Then we have tan inverse of the entire variable quantity divided by a. So t minus 2 thirds divided by rad 5 over 3 plus c. Okay, can we clean up some more? Absolutely, so these threes cancel here. So this is two over rad five, tan inverse. This three in the denominator, I'm gonna flip it up and distribute it through the numerator, but leave the rad five down there. So I could write this as three t minus two over rad five plus c. And then lastly, Go back to the original variable of the problem. So t was tangent of x over 2. Very good. So we have 2 over rad 5 tan inverse 
3 times tangent of x over 2 minus 2 over rod 5 plus c. And then I would just box it and be done with it. Yes, box that answer with pride. It's a little ugly. No, you don't need to rationalize the denominator. It's great. We love it. How did you like this substitution? You might say, Professor V, it didn't really seem to make life better for me. That was still really wild. Well, tell me if you solve the integral without the Weierstrass substitution. I'd love to see how. Um, if you look at the video that I did on that substitution, I picked a lot more friendly examples so you could see what a beautiful substitution it is. And a lot of the time, the integrand is super duper simple to work with. This one was a little more tricky with completing the square and some, some maybe kind of ugly constants, but I know you guys are up for the challenge. You guys have been doing such beautiful work. So I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, turn on notifications. Like I said, I've been having so many issues with the new iOS with editing and uploading and getting things out. I just keep running into little problems. So hopefully they fix the bugs soon, but that's why I'm not cranking them out by like 7 a.m. the way I like to. So my apologies, you guys. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok until it gets banned or who knows what's happening. Math with Professor V. I'll be back tomorrow. Bye.